Okay, so in today's notes, we're going to do a couple more circle proofs, and then we're going to use trigonometry to solve circles. So looking at the first proof, it says given circle O, we have AC, I'm going to highlight that, congruent to BD, and we need to prove that triangle CAB is congruent to triangle BDC. Now for some, it may be easier to pull those triangles out of this picture. So I'm going to take a minute to draw a triangle CAB. And it doesn't have to be perfect. And then the other triangle, BDC. And we just said, um, or the given was that AC is congruent to BD. So step number two. So remember, our methods to prove these triangles are congruent are side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, and hypotenuse leg. So based on what's given in the picture, so I'll give you a minute to take a look at it. So we don't have a diameter, we don't have a central angle, we have a lot of inscribed angles. We have some vertical angles, which are not necessarily part of our picture. But what, let's start with the fact that they told us that chord AC is congruent to chord BD. So if that's the case, then I know that arc AC is congruent to arc BD. So arc AC congruent to arc BD. And that's because congruent chords intercept congruent arcs. And congruent arcs give us congruent angles, whether it be central or inscribed. As we said, we have no vertex at the center. We have no central angles, but we should have some inscribed angles. So the inscribed angle, so if I trace it out, that intersects or intercepts arc AC is this angle right here. And I'm going to put a 1 here, which over in this picture would be a 1. And then on the other side, following along this way, this angle here intercepts arc BD, and that's a 2. And that would be right here. So step 3 is angle 1 congruent to angle 2, because inscribed angles that intercept congruent arcs are congruent. So we know it's not SSS or HL, because we have a side and one pair of angles congruent. So now I need another pair of sides or a pair of angles congruent for um, SAS, ASA, or AAS. And as I stated, we could use these vertical angles here, but they're not part of those larger triangles. If we take a look at arc BC, we have two angles that intercept that arc. If I trace along, that's angle A right here, or CAB. I'm going to number that a 3. And then following along here, be CDB. I'm going to call that 4. And that would be this angle here. So angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. Because same is the reason in step three, but they intercept the same arc. So number four is because inscribed angles that intercept the same arc are 
are congruent. Now the two triangles are congruent. So if I label, again, three is congruent to four, one is congruent to two, that's angle, angle, side. So we are done with the first proof. So triangle CAB is congruent to triangle BDC by angle, angle, side. All right, the last one of the notes and the one on the back, let's see if I can move this over a little bit. There we go. And up. So we're given circle O and we're given two perpendicular chords. We want to prove that OC, or OZ rather, bisects angle XOY. So let's highlight XOY. That's right here. And if I want OZ to be the bisector, then I want this angle, I'm going to call it a 3, congruent to angle 4. So I'm going to make note that we need to end up with angle 3 congruent to angle 4. Because if a segment bisects, or if a segment divides an angle into two congruent angles, then it is a bisector. All right, so if we can prove the two little triangles congruent OZX and OZY, then 3 and 4 could be congruent by CPCTC, and we're good. So let's look to use this given right here. What do perpendicular segments or chords give us? Well, they give us right angles. So I'm going to put a 1 and a 2 right here and state that angle 1 and 2 are right angles. And that's just because perpendicular lines intersect to form right angles. Now, I'm not going to state that they're congruent right away until I know I am or I'm not going to use HL. So in order to use HL, we need a hypotenuse and a leg. So is there any way this hypotenuse opposite the 90 OX is congruent to OY? Yes, because those are radii. So number three, OX is congruent to OY because radii in the same circle are congruent. Now, is there any way to get a leg? Sure is. We've got OZ reflexive. So therefore, the triangles would be congruent by HL. So OZ congruent to OZ by the reflexive property. And in order to say the triangles are congruent by HL, we first need to state the triangles are right triangles. So triangle O, Z, X, and triangle O, Z, Y are right triangles. And that's because a right triangle has one right angle by definition. All right, now they're congruent by HL, so triangle OZX is congruent to triangle OZY by HL, and angle 3 is congruent to angle 4 by CPCTC. And then last, we can state now that OZ does bisect angle x, o, y. And that's because, I'll do it in if-then format, if a segment divides an angle into two congruent angles, then it is a bisector.
think either proof is bad, but we haven't done too many proofs um, like this one here. All right, now to finish up with three trigonometry problems. The ratios are up at the top, as well as the log of sines, the law of cosines, and the area formula. So let's take a look at example three. I'm going to move that up. We have tangents PA and PB. They're drawn to circle O from external point P. OA is 12 centimeters, and the measure of APB is 40. Find the length of the tangent to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. Well, if OA, so as we stated before, the point of tangency, all radii are perpendicular. So we actually have two congruent right triangles here by side angle side, or hypotenuse leg. Anywho, it says that OA is 12, so OB with 12, and we need to find the length of A tangent. So it could either be this X or that X. So let's just focus on, on one right triangle, this one right here. So according to that angle of 20, we have the side opposite and adjacent. We don't have the hypotenuse at all, so that's going to be our tangent ratio. So tangent of 20 degrees equals 12 over x. Multiply both sides by x. We get x tan of 20 degrees equals 12. Divide by the tangent of 20 degrees. And we'll have x. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode. So mine is not. So now it is. I'm going to get out of that, and I'm going to use that alpha link button to type the whole thing in as a fraction. So 12 over the tan of 20 degrees. And there's our decimal. We're going to round to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. So the length of a tangent is approximately, open that back up, because it is 9, 6, and it does say to the nearest tenth, we do need to round to the nearest tenth place, the 6 is going to bump that 9 to a 10, which bumps the 2 to a 3. So again, we're not going to write 33 centimeters, but rather 33.0 to round to that tenth place. All right, number 4. In the accompanying diagram, line DCFG is tangent to circle O at F. Line ECH is a secant intersecting the circle at A and B. And the measure of arc AB is 140. And the measure of arc AF is 160. FC is 10. Find AF to the nearest tenth. So I'm going to highlight AF. So that's a part of this triangle right here. We know that um, FC so FC is 10. We don't know what AC is. But if I'm trying to find AF, I'm going to call that X. And this is not a 90 degree angle here because only when a radius intersects does that happen. So we're going to end up having to use law of sines or law of cosines. So to find some of the angle measures here, <laughs> well, if this arc is 160, this arc is 140, I can find arc BF. So if I take 360 and subtract 140 and 160, which is 300, we get 60. So this little arc is 60 degrees. So that means this angle, I'm going to call it X, x is equal to the difference of 160 and 60 divided by 2. And that's 100 over 2, which is 50 degrees. I'm going to move that triangle down here. So there's my x, there's my 10, here is 50. And then we also know uh, we have an inscribed angle here, which is going to be half of the arc 60, which is 30. 
All right, so whenever we have two sides and two angles, that is the law of sines. So it's the length of the side, so I'm going to choose 10, over the sine of the angle opposite, so over the sine of 30 degrees, equals x, over the sine of the angle opposite, which would be the sine of 50. I'm going to move my work over here. Cross product, we would have x sine 30, equals 10 sine 50, divide by the sine of 30, and we're going to have x. So let's go to the calculator. I'm going to type all that in again using the fraction bar. So 10 sine of 50, divided by the sine of 30, and we got 15.32, and we're running to the nearest 10, so that 3 is going to stay the same because the 2 does not bump it up. So AF was my X, and that's approximately 15.3, and they did not include a unit in the question. So we're okay. All right, last one, number 5. Move this over again. Okay. In the accompanying diagram of circle O, we have chords A, B, and C, D. They intersect at E. A, E, C is 65. A, E is 6. E, B, 8. And E, D, 12. Find C, E. Well, C, E is here. And that's part of chord um, C, D. So this is actually no trig involved whatsoever. And this is one of our circle theorems. And the theorem is C, E times ED equals AE times EB, okay? So I'm going to call, let's call this X. So we have X times 12 equals 8 times 6. 12X equals 48 divided by 12, and X is 4. So the length of CE is 4. Part B. Find the length of BD to the nearest tenth. And BD is right here. So let's focus on that triangle. Let's pull that out of the picture. So here's B, E, D. I already used X, so I'll call that Y. And we know this is a length of eight. We know this is a length of 12. And right here we have a pair of vertical angles. So I know that this angle here is 65. So in order to find y, when we have three sides in an angle, that's law of cosines. So law of cosines starts with the side opposite the angle squared. So y squared equals the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So 8 squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times the product of those two other sides, times the cosine of the angle opposite the side. Um, so now I'm going to do some math. I'm going to do the 8 squared plus 12 squared first. And 64, 144 is 208 minus, and then 16 times 12, because 2 times 8 is 16, 192 cosine of 65 degrees. Now we can't combine those two because they're not like terms. And I'm going to take the square root at this time so I can type that whole line in the calculator. So plus or minus, because we took the square root, rejecting the negative, and let's see what we get. So second uh, square root of 208 minus 192 cosine of 65. And we're rounding to the nearest tenth. So BD is approximately 11.3, because the 6 is going to bump the 2 to a 3. So 11.26 dot, 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 to the nearest tenth. And then BD is approximately 11.3. And last, part C says to find the area of triangle EBD. 
So if I wanted to find the area, the area of formula is on the previous page. It's one half AB sine of the angle. So remember, AB are the two sides that include the given angle. Okay, so the area, part C, area of triangle EBD equals one half of eight times 12 sine of 65 degrees. Well, half of eight is four, four times 12, so 48, just to simplify that expression before I go to the calculator, 48 sine of 65. And to finish for today, oops, I hit that twice, we're on to the nearest tenth again. Uh, the five is going to stay the same because the zero doesn't bump it up. And I'll write the whole, whole part of it, enough to see how we round. And it's approximately 43.5. I'll put square units and add units back up here. All right, and there you have it.